Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would just speak through me in the name of Jesus. God, I just ask that you would prepare the hearts and the mind of everyone listening today. That the seed of the word of God would be planted on good ground that will produce a hundredfold. In Jesus' name. Good morning, Gingersburg Church, and hello to those of you worshiping online. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Marcy, and I have the absolute pleasure of serving here at Gingersburg as the Director of Adult Ministries. Now, we are in the final week of the Modern Love Sermon Series, which just so happens to be Valentine's Day week. So happy Valentine's Day to all the lovers and the friends out there. I love Valentine's Day. (laughs) So far, we have heard such great wisdom from Pastor Dennis on topics such as dating, marriage, parenting, and even how to navigate and make the most of your empty nester years. Well, today, I am going to talk to a group of folks who often get overlooked in sermon series like this, and especially during this time of year, my singles. Where are all my single peeps at who are out here trying to navigate life? Raise your hands. I am right here with you. So today is for us. Today is for us, whether you are single by choice, you're widowed, divorced, or you just suck at relationships, today is for us. Listen, no judgment. One thing singleness has taught me is the areas in my life that I need to work on so that I can have healthier relationships. So I am hoping to encourage my singles and pour into my singles and give you all some practical tips that you can use to steward your singleness well. Now, if you are not single, please don't check out because this is also for you. A lot of us, at least half of us, will end our life as a single. And even still, these practical principles are good for you, even if you are married, okay? So it's good for all of us, all right? So don't check out. Now, before I get into my message, there are quite a few myths about singleness that really need to be squashed. Because of time's sake, I can't get into all of them, but I will give you four myths about singleness that we need to stop right now. Myth number one, I am low value because I'm over 25 and single. Am I the only one who's heard this? Any, raise your hand if you've heard this one before. That is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> we hear this a lot in pop culture nowadays, but the truth is your value has nothing to do with your marital status. You are God's masterpiece. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, the Apostle Paul informs us that For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. You know what else God said? He said that you are the head and not the tail. He said you are above only and not beneath. He said that you are heir of God, joint heir with Christ Jesus. And you know what? That gives you value. The fact that Jesus would give his life for you, that brings you value. The plan that God purposed for your life, now that brings you value, not your marital status. Amen. (laughs) Myth number two, being single is boring. I don't say no. (laughs) The truth is, singleness is what you make it. Now, to my person who said, nope, I'm right there with you. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I've been living my best life out here. Y'all, I've been able to travel the world, try all kinds of new experiences and activities. I've been able to serve on mission. Now, I love to network, so I was able to develop a huge circle of amazing, well-connected individuals. I've been on some amazing dates with some really dope people. I'm able to be as generous as I want to be. I've been able to really experience so much of what life has to offer without having to check in or ask for permission. So I appreciate it. (laughs) The book of John chapter 10, verse 10, we see that Jesus came so that we can live a full life. So guess what? Baby, I'm going to live life to the fullest. Amen? Amen. All right. 
Myth number three, marriage will complete me. If you believe that, you watch too many movies and you need to stop taking advice from Jerry Maguire because the truth is only God can complete you. No man or woman can make you whole. Only God can make you whole. And then my final myth for today, I need to get married in order to fulfill my purpose. Now, while having a spouse can and should push you towards and help you to fulfill your purpose, today I hope you will understand that the truth is you don't need to be married to walk in purpose. I need us to stop putting our life on hold because we are single and stop wasting your singleness wishing that you weren't. Paul said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 32 through 35, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious only about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and in spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this for your benefits, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. Now, please hear me when I say that we value marriages here at Gingensburg Church. Just this past Friday, we had over 40 couples right here in this worship center together for married people date night. That excites and encourages me. You see, I believe that there is an attack from the enemy on the family unit, which has been made apparent by the fact that 40 to 50% of first marriages end in divorce and 60 to 67% of second marriages end in divorce. We rebuke that over this community. We will do whatever we can do to pour into healthy relationships here at Gingensburg Church. And part of that is us helping to pour into singles so that they are able to steward their single season well. So that if and when they decide to marry, they can be equally yoked with like-minded individuals who can push them towards purpose and a happy, fulfilling marriage. So when you're married, your attention should be on how to please your spouse. But if you're single, Let's take advantage of this unique opportunity to develop intimacy with Christ without distraction, doing what pleases the Lord, being holy in body and in spirit. I truly believe that if we do this, this will help us to develop a solid foundation for our future marriages if that's something you desire. Y'all, singleness is a beautiful gift and if stewarded well, can be a very fulfilling and impactful season of your life. It breaks my heart to see so many singles wasting their singleness, wishing that they weren't single, envying what somebody else has. The desire for marriage, it's a healthy desire from God. I'm not saying don't hope for marriage, but what I am saying is don't let that desire for marriage become an idol that overtakes your heart and your mind in a way that you're unable to hear from God. The book of Psalms 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. I truly believe that He can and He will. You know why? Because the more you delight yourself in the Lord, the more your desires line up with God's will for your life. But if we are not spending these single seasons developing intimacy with Him, we miss out on this opportunity to align ourselves and to walk completely in His will. So, this also leads us susceptible to yoking ourselves up 
with people who are not in alignment with God's purpose for our lives, whether that's romantic relationships, even just platonic friendships. This morning, I want to share with you all three tips for stewarding your single season well. Tip number one, develop intimacy with Christ. So what does that look like? What does it look like to develop intimacy with Christ? Now, this is pretty personal. It's developing your relationship with God. This is what helps us to go from being babes in Christ to being more mature followers of Christ through developing our spiritual disciplines. We do this, we develop intimacy by being intentional about setting aside time to sit with Jesus without distraction. Digging into his word, getting into prayer, just being still before him to hear his voice. This is where we begin to hear God. And I'm not necessarily talking audibly, but through his spirit leading and guiding us. We have to stop solely relying on Sunday morning worship to feed us spiritually for the week. We have to be digging in the word for ourselves. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Seeking his word for principles and for keys on how to do this thing called life. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 8. When teaching about the kingdom, Jesus said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be open. I can pretty much guarantee you that everything that you're going through in your life, every experience that you're dealing with, every question that you have, the answer can be found in the Word of God. But you won't know it if you're not looking for it. Get in the Word. Develop intimacy with Christ. Also, spending time with God and in God's Word will help us to establish our value system, which will be your guide for your life. And it'll help us also to establish healthy boundaries to protect what it is that we value. So again, tip number one, develop intimacy with Christ. Tip number two, understand and, be, and begin walking in it, your purpose. Once we develop intimacy with Christ, this helps us to align with God and His will for our lives, which in turn helps us to understand who we are in Christ and what God purposed for our lives. You see, we are all created by God in His image with a unique purpose that we should be utilizing to disciple others and to build up the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven, whether that be right here in this church out in your communities, with your family, or around the globe, your purpose is necessary. And the world needs you to understand and to begin to walk in that purpose. Your single season is an amazing opportunity to seek God to understand exactly what that is. Now, a few of you know my personal testimony, but many of you don't. I grew up in a Christian household. And at a young age, I decided to become a Christian because I heard about hell and decided that if that was real, I didn't want to go there. Was it just me? Okay. <laughs> that didn't seem like a place I wanted to go. My understanding of God was that he was watching me, waiting to reward me for being good and to punish me for being bad. So naturally, I wanted to do everything that I could to make him happy so that I could get that reward. But because I'm human, I often made mistakes, which led me to coming up to the altar almost every Sunday, asking for forgiveness and to be saved again, right? After a while of doing this, I got frustrated by the fact that I couldn't be perfect. Not to mind you, what happens if I die or the rapture comes in the middle of the week and I didn't get a chance to go to the altar to repent? If I'm going to go to hell anyways, I might as well go in with a bang, was what I was thinking. So I just gave up trying. And that led me to making a series of very bad life choices. I started feeling this huge emptiness, this big gaping hole in my life. And I was trying to fill that void, but 
I felt like I had no value, no purpose, and I definitely had no direction in my, for my life. So I began filling that void with relationships, which led me to becoming an unwed mother. And then to fix that, I decided to marry the first person who proposed to me, which led to a toxic marriage. That void in my life that I tried to fill with marriage got even bigger. It wasn't until a few years after my marriage had ended that I finally came to the end of myself. And I said, God, if you're real, help. Show me that you're real. And it was at that moment that God began a transformation work in my heart. Y'all, I didn't know how to pray or read the Bible, so I just started Google searching, what does the Bible have to say about whatever I was feeling or going through at that moment? And God began to speak to me through that Google search Bible study. I started to grow in the things of the Lord, and God started to show me his purpose and his plan and start to build up my confidence. During that time, I kept a journal. And the journal started out with me crying out to the Lord, everything I was feeling, all the hurt and all the pain. But as I began to spend more time with God and more intimacy with God and being in his word, that journal of pain turned into a journal of praise where I was thanking God for loving me, for caring for me, for his mercy, for his grace, for how he has transformed my life. All I wanted to do was be in his presence at every opportunity. And it was at that time that God gave me a vision that showed me the purpose that he had for my life. He showed me standing on stage in front of hundreds of people teaching the gospel. He showed me pouring into young women who have experienced the same things I went through and teaching them everything that the Father taught me. He showed me joining forces with other men and women of God to unite the body of Christ in the Miami Valley area so that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can bring revival and transformation to our communities. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You see what the world would have looked at and discarded as damaged goods. God said, no. You are my masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. When I surrendered my life to Christ and began to develop intimacy with him, that is when I began to experience true wholeness, true value, and a purpose that was bigger than myself. You see, you do not have to be married to walk in purpose, right? Jesus was never married, and every man, woman, and child that is in this room is here today because of the purpose that he fulfilled in his life, death, and resurrection. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. So tip number one, we begin developing intimacy with Christ, which leads us to tip number two of beginning to understand and walk in our purpose. And then finally, we have tip number three. Surround yourself with purpose partners. Now, not every person in this room wants to be married or feels called to marriage, and that's okay. As a matter of fact, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7, in a nutshell, hey, I wish everybody was single like me, but to each his own, okay? So if that's you, cool, I feel that. That's noble. However, let me let you know, you still need purpose partners. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 through 10. One of the wisest men to ever walk the face of the earth, King Solomon, advises us that two are better than one because they have a good return for their hard work. If either should fall, one can pick up the other. But how miserable are those who fall and don't have a companion to help them up. God didn't intend for us to do life alone. The purpose that God gave you is too great for you to try to carry it on your own. 
In Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 through 28, we see that God created man in his own image. It says, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And then God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. When God blessed man, he instructed man to be fruitful, meaning to produce or create and to multiply. Now, you may be thinking, Mercy, it's talking about getting married and making babies. And he is, but not just that. God wants us to be fruitful and multiply in every area of, the, of your life, whether that be starting or acquiring businesses, starting a nonprofit, building wealth, mentoring or discipling others, planning a church, whatever it is that God gave you to do, he wants you to be fruitful and multiply, but you can't be fruitful and multiply alone. You need a partner or partners, and you need to be pouring into them in order to do the same. The reason you are sitting in this room today is because Jesus was fruitful and multiplied. He poured into 12 disciples, that poured into more, that poured into more. And to fast forward down to today, somebody who got poured into by Jesus told us about the gospel of Christ. The purpose that God gave you is not meant just for you. It's meant for this earth generations down the road. But one times one equals what? One. One times one equals one. We can't multiply by ourselves. We need others. Everyone has a purpose that is necessary to progress our community and the world around us. If we don't walk in our God-given purpose alongside purpose partners and then teach others to do the same, we will never progress and we will not make the impact that we were called to make, thus negatively affecting our community as a whole. The community needs men and women of God to rise up and take their God-given dominion over this earth. Even Paul, who apparently loved being single, wasn't alone. He had purpose partners. Remember Barnabas, Silas, and Timothy? Jesus had purpose partners. The 12 disciples, right? Even God modeled purpose partnership through the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, three in one. Now before we wrap up, one important lesson that I have learned as a single woman was the importance of surrounding myself with people who shared my values and respect my purpose. You see, my casual friends don't necessarily need to understand my purpose, but they do need to respect it, right? Befriending people who do not respect your values and our purpose can leave us susceptible to behaving in ways that can compromise both our values and our purpose. However, if we are called to be like Jesus, and we always say that Jesus eats with everyone, right? then that means that we are called to eat with everyone. That means befriending people that don't think or believe the same way that you do. However, it's important to set boundaries and to have mutual respect for one another. Now, with that being said, Jesus had many followers, right? He had 12 disciples, one of which was Judas. But that inner circle... That was only 3D. We have to be intentional about who we let in that inner circle. This goes back to the sermon Pastor Dennis preached a few weeks ago on dating when he talks about determining the parameters of your search. That's not just for dating. That's for anybody you let in your inner circle. Now, if you haven't heard that sermon or you need a refresher, I want to encourage you to check it out on the Gingisburg Facebook or YouTube page. Amazing sermon. I'm not going to re-preach his sermon. He did a good enough job in and of himself. <laughs> but check it out. Now, once we have developed intimacy with God, began walking in our purpose and surrounding ourselves with purpose-minded individuals, we are in a much healthier position to pursue relationships that lead to healthy marriage if that is something that you desire. My heart goes out for those of us who are 30, 40, 50 and beyond, who have never been married, and you're wondering, what's wrong with me? Why haven't I found my husband or my wife yet? There's nothing wrong with you. 
You are God's masterpiece. If you desire marriage, don't be discouraged. God cares about everything that concerns you. And if this is a concern of yours, then I believe that God cares about it. But first, we need to be in the presence of God more so than we need a spouse. Being in the presence of God helps us to heal from the inside out, filling up all those voids, giving us a direction in our life so that we can begin to walk in His purpose for our lives. This will position us to attract and to recognize other healthy whole partners that can push us towards purpose, not away from it. I want us to take a moment right now. Let's open up your hands with me. We're gonna be silent before the Lord, sitting in his presence, asking him to reveal to us the things that we need to surrender to him that are coming in the way of developing intimacy. And then I'm gonna pray for you. God, we thank you for the gift of singleness. Lord, we ask that you would help us to steward this season well. That you would show us the areas that we need to surrender to you so that we can become closer to you. Anything that we've made an idol, that put in the place that only you should be, even if that is marriage. Lord, for those of us who don't really know what our purpose is, Lord, I ask that you would begin to reveal that to us so that we can begin to walk in our God-given purpose, not depriving the world of the gift that you have given us for them. Lord, those of us who are married, I just ask that you would show them how even in their marriage, they can begin to develop and cultivate their intimacy with you together with their spouse. We speak healthy relationships, healthy marriages, and healthy singleness in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have been blessed by this video, feel free to comment on what spoke to you. Hit the like button and share this with a friend who needs encouragement today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss out on any of the latest videos. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you soon.